Good morning, everybody. I hope y'all had a blessed night. God bless us, wake us up this morning. I'm going to read for your consideration from the party numbers of Psalms, three verses. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the mick and murray clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and feel and shall trust in the Lord. I raise you the part of numbers of songs, the first and the third verse. May God have a blessing on the reader to hear and the do of his word. Amen. Good morning once again. Good morning. Our Father, O Almighty God, one and only true God, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father God, we come to you this morning as humble as we know how, and giving you thanks for all of your benefits. We thank you for letting us wake up this morning, our eyes open. Finding our surroundings at peace, our communities, able to put our feet on the floor and move. Father God, we want to thank you above all else for the gift that you afforded us as sinners before your son gave his life as a sacrifice through the shedding of his blood the dying and the raising from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth. Father God, we want to praise and glorify and thank you this day. We want you to bless this worship experience throughout this day. Bless the messenger that's going to deliver your word. We pray that it feeds somebody that's starving to know you in this troubled land. Father God, you keep us at peace, even though this land is trouble, because in you is perfect peace. Father God, we also want to take this time to beg your forgiveness of our transgressions and pray for those among us that are sick, hurting, mentally, spiritually, physically, wherever they may be, at homes and hospital beds and Throughout this creation, we pray, O oh Lord, for all mankind. We want to pray for the new St. John family. They need you. I need you. We all need you. Father, bless us. And keep us during this Easter season and make us aware of what this season is really about. It's about the gift of your love. Father God, I also want to pray for every officer and member of this, this church house board, have mercy on us, bless us, keep us. And dear Lord, when it's all said and done, and there's nothing else we can do, we pray that you meet us someplace and worship us and, and usher us into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. I want to say good morning to thankful to God for being here on this Palm Sunday. Amen. Thank, thank the Lord. We are truly blessed to be in his presence. I'd like to acknowledge our visitors at this time. Sister Brian is with us as so she'll be leaving perhaps after the day, but we're glad to have her with us on today. You want to say anything, Sister Brian? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Satan, we will be praying for you, Sister Brian, and I know you'll be keeping up with us and we'll be keeping up with you. Amen. We'll be praying for your brother-in-law, uh, likewise, and the rest of the family in, in Florida. Um, do we have any other visitors? Any other visitors? I know you not no visitor. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you'll be right by my hometown, Abbeville. Yes, All right. Well, we're going to certainly. You will be. Uh-huh. All right. Well, we're going to be praying for you and the knee surgery is going to be well because we're going to put it in the hands of the Lord. And we're going to pray. God will take care of you. Amen. We're certainly going to miss you, but I know they'll be looking. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. All right. You be like Sister Brian. You be back and forth. No, that'll work. That'll work. You won't be that far down the road. All right. God bless you. Any other visitors? Any other? We have a, a guest uh, uh, soloist that Brother King invited to sing for us this morning. I don't know when she's Amen. going to sing. Amen. When is she going to sing, Brother King? Next? Well, I'm going to wait after I do mine. I'm going to wait and hear her sing. Then I'm going to go. You get ready. All right. Okay. You want to say anything, sis? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, if you're visiting with us, don't have a church on, we say to you, look no further. Let's continue uh, praying for Sister uh, Beverly King and the King family in the loss of her brother, Brother Donald Moore, who passed in Victorville, California. And the funeral is going to be March the 29th, uh, 29th uh, of, of this month. So let us pray for uh, the family during, the, during their loss, during their time of bereavement. And for those that may be traveling to California or different parts, wherever they come from to go to the funeral, we pray for safe passage for them there and back to their homes. Brother Calvin Clayton's funeral, uh, Deacon Clayton, will be March the 30th, right here in New St. John at 10 a.m. Let us pray for the Clayton family also uh, during their time of bereavement. And certainly we miss uh, Brother Clayton. When I look over to my left, I can just envision seeing him sitting there and um, we all have our time and we all have our, our season. We just make sure that you're ready when he calls your name, that you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Reverend Haley and his brother, Brother Lionel Haley, lost their uncle, um, Brother Leroy Haley in San Antonio, Texas, Funeral is Monday, April 1st, April 1st in San Antonio. So 
So let us pray for Reverend Haley's uh, and his brother and the rest of the family uh, during their time of, of bereavement likewise. God is able and he gives strength in our time of weakness. Um, we have our news bulletin has been passed out. Uh, does everyone have one? Okay. We need the pulpit doesn't have any. What y'all say? <laughs> My wife needs one. Like that, huh? There she go. All right, just fooling with it. <laughs> things that's, that's happening um, uh, and will be happening in the, in the near future and uh, see where where we are and what's going on and what's taking place, okay? All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. everybody praise the lord everybody truly this is the day that the lord has made amen we want to rejoice and be glad in it amen amen this song is calling response and y'all can help me sing it amen amen you're just for you don't mind on your feet put your hands together anybody excited to be here in the house sunday Hallelujah. Lift your voice and 
So glad to see Reverend Bart T. with us. Never know, might hear something else. <laughs> okay, I think we have the thought and has something. Uh, Sister Clayton has something special. Oh, somebody. God bless you, my sister. <laughs> God bless you. Hallelujah. Sister Clayton. morning to all. I come before you uh, on behalf of the Sunday School. On next Sunday, we will have uh, Sunday School in the sanctuary at 930. We will be having our Easter program. It's not going to be long. It's going to be short and sweet. But I just want to remind you to meet here in the uh, sanctuary at 930. Thank you. Amen.
Trouble waters. Lord is only in the name of Jesus that we come to you this morning. Father, we come because you had allowed us to come. We didn't have to wait this morning, but you saw fit, Father, to shake us one more time. Lord, we got up. With a little strength, eyes open, Lord. We had hearing, we had talking, we had moving in our body. Lord, we can't thank nobody but you. Because you're the one and only. While we come today seeking your help, Father, because you're the only one that can give it to us. Well, we love you today. Lord, our thing is to love you every day. All day. All night. Every time we open our mouth, we should say, thank you, Lord. Because we couldn't have did it without you, Father. And this morning, I said, thank you, Lord. Because I've been, Father. <laughs> oh, Lord, how much. <laughs> I say thank you. I don't know about nobody else, Lord, but I say thank you. You've been good to me. Mm -hmm. And Father, as I look around into your house this morning, you've been good to all of us, Father, because we are here. Didn't have to be here this morning, 
didn't have the opportunity to say thank you. But Lord, you gave us that opportunity. And today we say thank you, Lord. Lord, there are many, many, well, Father, all of us, we need you, Lord. Can't do nothing without you. You the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, Lord, we ask you this morning to have mercy on us according to your loving kindness, according to the most to do of all your love. And I ask you this morning to blot out our transgressions, turn it from all our wickedness. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we have to continue to create another, a clean heart and renew your righteous spirit within us, Father. And we will continue to give you all praises and all the glory. Because you alone are the only one that is truly worthy, Father. And we thank you today. Lord, I thank you today. I don't know about nobody else, but I thank you today, Lord. Do anybody thank God besides me this morning? You need to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, but you've been so good to us, Father. We can't say nothing but thank you. Lord, there are many in the element, but we know that you are able. Heal them in Jesus, Father. Father, there are many can't say, but you can, Lord. Lord, many can't hear, but you can. Many can't talk, but you can. Lord, many can't walk, but you can. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done. Father, I'm not worried about yesterday. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Father, I come to you today. Because today, right now, is all that I know I have. And I thank you for it. Because it didn't have to be. But you did it anyway. And I say thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. I don't know about nobody else, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me, Father. And I thank you. Lord, there are many trials and tribulations here this morning. You know them all, Lord. Lord, and I ask you in the name of Jesus to take them all in your hand, Father. And do that in which you do, Father. Have your way. Your way, Lord. The only way that it is. Have your way, Father. Oh, Lord, teach us, Lord. 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 Oh, Lord, we need your teaching. We need your teaching. We need your guidance, Lord. We need your love. We need your faith. In the name of Jesus, we ask you this moment that you give it to us, Lord. Lord, I know your word, but right now, Lord, I feel as though it's not about you. It's about your heart, Father God. Our hearts towards you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for our heart, Lord. That is desire us to learn your word. Oh, day, Lord. We need your word, Lord. We need you, Lord Jesus. We both go together. But it's about you, Father. It is about you, Lord Jesus. It's about you, Lord Jesus. It's about you, Lord Jesus. It's about you, Lord Jesus. Forgive me, but I just can't help it. It's about you, Lord Jesus. You are all that I need. You are all that I need. And I thank you, Father, for what you've done, for what you're doing. Lord, in the power and in the Holy Spirit, I thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, I pray for each and every individual that is in you today, Father, and beyond. I pray for the world, dear Lord. I don't know all the trials and tribulations, but I know that you Lord, and I ask you to have your way in each and every individual life, Father. Do to them that in which you shall do. Give to them, Father, that in which you will have. 
And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Father, I pray for each and every soul, every member that is you. For every minister, Lord, continue to give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your whole anybody. But Father God, I pray for the help you have given us, Lord. I pray for it, Lord. I pray for the first thing. I call them my and dad. I love them because I love them. I love them as my mother and my father in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, on this day, right now, Lord, not for yesterday and not for the moment, but for right now, Lord, crown it from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. From his heart, mind, body, and soul, dear master, give unto him the day in which you have us to have, Father. And I thank you, Lord God. That is what he do, Father. For years and years, that's what he has done. And I thank you for him, Father. I thank you for him. Because he give unto us that in which you give unto us, Father. And that is what we need, the word of God. The heart of God, the mind of God, and you give that to him, Father. Continue in the name of Jesus to raise him, Father, and to continue to teach him, Father, that he may continue to feed your sheep, Father. Give us that in which you have us to have, Father. I don't care about nobody else. Give us that in which you have us to have, Father, because that is all that is important, Father, because we can't make it with nothing else. And not make it with us. We need your word, Lord. And you give it to him. That he give it to us. I'm not. There are many things I can talk about. But I'm more interested in the word. I need the word today. I need the word today. Because that is what's going to do. The word. That's what I move by. The word. The word. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith in the word of God. I have faith in the word of God. So Lord, I pray that all of us in here have the word stored in our heart that you can attend to lead in God. I'm not alone. But I thank you for I thank you for the good time that you have given me. Because couldn't nobody else give it to me. You the one that is worthy for it what's going on in front of you. You can stop whatever you want. Stop. Oh Lord. You can make it go. Whenever all things are in your hands, mighty Father. And I thank you, Lord. That you are the leader and the guide of our lives. And we will continue to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Because you are the us. So once again, Father, touch it. Touch it with this wisdom. Continue to crown it with wisdom, knowledge, and your understanding. That he might continue. Bless his soul. Bless him this morning. Bless him every day. Because you are in control. And I thank you. Give on joy. That in which you have. Had for this day. And in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise. All the glory. And all the honor. For you are truly. Worthy. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you.
God, we give it to you. Give him to you, oh God. Use him today, Father. Use him today, Father. Give up to him that in which you have us today. In the name of Jesus. Bless his mind, body, and soul, Father. And we'll continue to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for you to be the one that is true to God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Bless you, Reverend Highlands. God keep you. Is our prayer for blessing us with that prayer. We're thankful to God for everything. I said we're thankful to God for everything. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice in. Be glad in. Are you glad? Are you glad? Yeah, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Have your Bibles with you. Turn with me in the New Testament in the book of Mark. Mark, the 11th chapter on this Palm Sunday. It's a good Sunday, isn't it? Mark, the 11th chapter you have it say man look at the B portion of that 10th verse Mark chapter 11 B portion of the 10th verse says Hosanna in the highest you may be seated. Hosanna in the highest. Our subject today, an, ex an exclamation of adoration. An exclamation of adoration. Hosanna in the highest. Today is Palm Sunday. It's a celebration of Christ's triumphal ride into Jerusalem. Antiquity, songs of people express their adoration of Jesus calling him the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. No higher tribute could have been expressed. Ironically, only days before his crucifixion. The contrast could not have been greater. First, this is adored. And then days later, he's executed 
in the most brutal fashion. Millions had gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover feast, and throngs of people gathered near the main gate as Jesus entered in. They adored Jesus. They waved palms as he rode on a donkey. Yet days later, they would make no attempt to stop his execution. Adoration, adoration is the expression of intense admiration. Parents adore their children with kisses and hugs and treats. You know how you treat your children when you adore them? Fans adore their celebrities with posts on social media, expensive concert tickets, and a collection of memorabilia. People adore nature, a beautiful sunset, a majestic mountain. It's beautiful, isn't it? A dozen roses. Lovers show adoration through a lifetime of passion and devotion. Christians adore Christ. Question, how do we express our adoration? In the Bible, expressions of adoration were common in the worship of God. Adoration was shown through prostration, bowing to touch your forehead to the floor. It was how the Hebrews expressed their intense admiration and worship of God. As far back as Genesis, the 17th chapter and the third verse, Abraham met God and fell on his face. And many centuries later, this custom of adoration through prostration persisted. After Christ's resurrection, his followers, those that were following him, greeted him by bowing to hold his feet to worship him. And you'll find that in Matthew, the 28th chapter and the ninth verse. Worship, 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 adoring the Lord who has done everything for us. Adoring him for his kindness. Adoring him for his goodness. Adoring him for his mercy. Question. How should we worship Christ? The Apostle Paul reminds us in Philippians, the second chapter and 11th verse, that at the name of Jesus, every knee, I didn't say some, I didn't say a few, I didn't say most, but every knee should bow. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every, whether you want to or not, whether you like it or not, every tongue is going to confess, and every knee. Is going to bow. 
That includes your knees and my knees. Now, uh, some of us fear getting down on our knees because we won't be able to get back up. I, I get it. I understand. I, I, I get it. But we should have no problem bowing our heads. That, 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 that's the least we can do to show our adoration to the one who saved us from the penalty of sin, which, by the way, is death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Christ is worthy to be praised. He paid for sure death for our sin nature and promised us a home in heaven question. So how do we show him our adoration? Well, first of all, we adore Christ through our singing. Our sister sang for us. Oh, see, she sung. Hallelujah. God has gifted her with a gift that she is using for the Lord. She could be using it somewhere else. She could be using it in the world, but she's using it for the Lord. Good choice. Best choice. Because when the world gets through with you, they spit you out. We adore Christ through our singing. From the early days of the Christian church all the way to our present day, music has been the center of our worship. And while it's certain that it has transformed over time to more, for more contemporary sound that aligns itself with pop culture, its purpose is the same. To lift the name of Jesus, our Christ. I love the music of the church, don't you? It, it, it provokes our participation and it highlights our hope when we sing praises to the Lord, we are whisked away to a place of serenity and sanctity where our problems take a sidestep to allow Christ the forefront. The old saints have their old favorite, have their favorite song. We sing that Christ pulled us out of the miry clay and set us on a rock to stay. We sing of the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine and that's why we praise him all the day long. We sing bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. These old hymns touch our hearts, especially the hearts of senior saints like me. And they connect us to the spirit of Christ. But the same is true of our contemporary songs of praise. We sing how great is our God. We sing that Christ can break every chain. We sing he's alive because we know in our hearts that he lives in us. But ironically, it is amazing grace that remains the greatest worship song of our time. The hymn written by a former slave trader turned preacher 
convicted by the groaning of his captives in the belly of his ship. John Newton repented of his sin and wrote, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Every word of his hymn was poor from the dark days and treacherous times of his seafaring days as a sinner. His tombstone epitaph tells the story of his conversion. It reads, John Newton, clerk, once an infidel and libertine, was by the rich mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, preserved, restored, pardoned, and appointed to preach the faith he had long labored to destroy. The truth is that's our story also. We may not be former slave traders, but we spent our fair share of time trading Christ for a life of sin. We may have heard about Jesus on grandmother's knee, but for a time we ran in another direction. But God, I said, but God preserved us. And one day, by the rich mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, we were restored to him and pardoned. Thank God. Thank God for restoration. Thank God for pardoning us. These are the songs that should flow from our hearts, not just in the sanctuary, but in our car, in our homes, and on our jobs, even if we must hum them to ourselves. Why? Because we adore Christ. Here's a familiar expression of adoration. David said in Psalms 19 and 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, that part of me that you can't see, but that part of me that's calling steady upon the Lord, asking God to accept my meditations, accept me from the inside out. He said that I may be acceptable in thy sight. It doesn't matter if I'm acceptable in your sight. It doesn't matter if I'm accepted in somebody else's sight. As long as I'm accepted in the sight of God. That's all that counts. He said, oh Lord, my strength. Where does my strength come from? It comes from the Lord. And my what? Redeemer. We've heard it quoted many times in corporate prayers in church. Why? Because the words acknowledge the Lord as our Redeemer. The psalmist expressed adoration to the Redeemer that he knew one day would come. We express our adoration of our Redeemer who has come to us right now. He is already here. We know that we can walk with him. We know that we can talk with him. We know that we can sing praises unto his holy and his divine name. We adore Christ, our Lord. Then we adore Christ through our prayers. Prayer is our open communication in our prayers to Christ. We should praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Are you praising him for his goodness 
He's been good, isn't he? Are you praising him for his kindness? He's been kind to us. Didn't have to be, but he's kind, isn't he? We give him praise. We give him praise. Not sometimes, but we give him praise all of the time. Why? Because he's worthy. Is he worthy? I said he's worthy to be praised. I love to praise the Lord. Don't you? I love to think about the goodness of the Lord. And all that he has what? Done for me. And you have to point at yourself what he has done for you. God has done great things for you. He's done great things for me. And he keeps on doing great things in our lives. Every day God is doing something different for us. God is moving us in a different direction every day. God is moving obstacles out of our way. God is putting our feet where we need to stand firmly and say, I love the Lord. You heard my cry, pitied my every groan. In seminary, preachers in training are taught the appropriate way to pray. They are taught that an, an appropriate prayer should begin with adoration. First, we acknowledge the Lord for who he is, for his power, his dominion, and his authority. Then we acknowledge the works of his hands and the blessings of his goodness toward us. Next, we ask for his wisdom and his guidance that his will be done. Then we ask for forgiveness. We express our personal needs and ask for protection from temptation and evil. And finally, we should close our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Christ sits at the right hand of God making intercession for us. He is our arbitrator and our negotiator. He reminds the Lord continually of his death's adjudication of our sins. We have no right to approach the Lord God except in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Question. Is this how we, how you pray? Too, too many Christians start with gimmies. Gimme this and gimme that. But God wants to see the humility of the one in need. Praying with a demanding rashness is no way to approach the Lord. The believer who approaches the Lord with genuine humility, a bow down head and a sincere heart, and expresses his adoration of God through praise, is following the model prayer given to us by Christ himself, who said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Is there praise in your prayer? David's prayers were full of adoration for God. And if we could ask David, he would tell us that praise is redeeming. For David would say in Psalms 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd. David speaks to us in Psalms 27 and 1. And he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Are y'all ready before? And then David says in Psalms 18 
Verses 1 and 2. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. And my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation. And my high tower. In this last example, David left nothing to chance. He wanted the Lord to be sure David was aware of God's place in his life. Is that how you pray? Do you show your adoration or your prayers uttered in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you adore? Finally, we adore Christ through our testimony. You are a witness of the goodness of God and the joy of your salvation through Christ. Is he good? Question. So how is your witness? Do you struggle to give a testimony at work, at home, or even at church, despite the necessity to do so? You heard it right. It's a requirement to give our testimonies. I didn't say it. Peter said it. In 1 Peter 3 and 15, he said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh your reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That's how we adore Christ, through our testimony. If you're living as a disciple of Jesus Christ and outwardly demonstrating your faith, someone should be at least a little curious about how you made it this far. Yeah. And at every opportunity, you should share that joy with them. Let your adoration of your Savior pour out from your heart. Pour it out in your social media posts. Pour it out in your phone conversations. Pour it out in your living testimony. Not just what you say, but what you do. It's Palm Sunday, my brothers and my sisters. Let us pour out our adoration to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's pour out our adoration to the shepherd that leads us. Let's pour out our adoration to the physician who heals us. Let us pour out our adoration to the anchor who secures us. Let us pour out our adoration to the judge who forgives us. He is our high priest. He is our rock. He is our friend. He is our guide. He is our deliverer. He is our captain. He is the most high God. He is my helper. He is my keeper. He is my surety. When I need somebody to let it be known that he is on my side. When I let it be known that he is my guide. I call on the name of the Lord. I can call him in the morning. I can call him late at night. I can call him with a low voice, but I can call him with a loud voice as well. But whenever I call on the name of the Lord, I know that he hears my cry. 
Sometimes I get weary. Sometimes I feel I'm worn. But when I think about what the Lord has done for me, when I think about the goodness of the Lord, I get happy in my heart. I get happy in my soul. When I think about what the Lord has done for me, how far the Lord has brought me from I've been up and God knows I've been down. I've been level to the ground. But I found out I serve a God that knows how to lift me up. I serve a God that knows how to put a smile on my face. I have a testimony. God is a good God. I have a, a testimony that the Lord cries weeping eyes. The Lord protects me along the way. Every now and then I feel that I want to give in. Every now and then I feel like I want to throw my hand down. But something inside of me tells me to raise them hands. God's been too good for you to put them down. Do I have anybody here? Don't mind raising your hands and giving God praise. Think about uh, where the Lord uh, has brought you from. Think about uh, how the Lord delivered you uh, in your crisis. Think about uh, how the Lord is blessing you uh, right now. I didn't say after a while. I didn't say by and by. But right now is he blessing right now. Somebody understand the goodness of the Lord. Anybody? 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 Yeah. Know the goodness of the Lord. He's good when I'm no good. He's good when I have bad days. He's good when the sun don't shine. He's good when I have my trials. He's good when I have my tribulations. He's good when I'm well. He's good when I'm sick. He's good when I'm down. He's good when I'm up. He's just a good God. Isn't he good? Isn't he good? He's good all the time. Now and then, every now and then, I have to bow my head. I can't raise it up. I adore the Lord. He is my strength. He is my keeper. I love him with my whole heart. I adore him. He's the keeper of my soul. He is my guide when I get lost. He's a light shining in the darkness. He is my battle axe when I am in battle. He is my strength when I can't find any strength. He is, he is everything that I need. He is in my storm, he on my way. Help me, it's all right. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, 
Glory to the Lord. Glory. Can you shout out? Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Do you love him? If you love him, say yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Surely. 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 Feel like David. Surely. Surely. I said he's good. I said he's kind. He's a merciful God. Truly, goodness, mercy follows me all the days of my life. I shall dwell, 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 dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? How long? How long? Forever and ever and ever. Oh, yeah. Yellow. 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 Want to keep you? Wanna keep you, wanna keep you uh, every, every, every day, every hour. He's a keeper. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yeah. I love him. I adore him. He's my shepherd. He's my God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. On this Palm Sunday, adoration. We put exclamation on adoration. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the highest, in the highest, in the highest, in the highest. I said in the highest. In the highest. There might be one today. Ready to give your life to Christ. Yes, we adore him. We put nothing before him. He is our master. God bless you. He is our king. King of kings and he is Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Is there another? This is serious. Very serious. It's no time to play. When God speaks, we have to hush. When God is talking, we must be quiet. Listen to what the Lord is saying. That's why sometimes we miss out on so many things because we're not listening to the Lord. We're not paying attention and then we're not heeding what the Lord is saying unto us. Listen. Let the Spirit talk. Let the Spirit intercede. 
let the Holy Spirit take precedence. Our souls belong to Christ. And to him only. We need Jesus. Like we need the air we breathe. We cannot make it without him. Not only do we need him right now. But we need him every day, every moment, every breath we take. We need Jesus. And Jesus alone. To good morning, good afternoon, congregation. Good afternoon. This morning we have coming as a candidate for baptism, Sister Kennedy Joseph. Amen. 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 What's your last name? Amen. What's the last name? Kennedy, Kennedy Joseph. Joseph, Sister Joseph. How are you doing, Sister Joseph? God bless you. We've been waiting for you. Thank God that time has finally come for you to give your life to Christ. Are you happy? Are you nervous? <laughs> Should be. We're right here for you. So you don't have any reason to be nervous. We are here for you. It's going to be all right. Okay? It's going to be all right. Take a breath. God is good. He's a kind God. You know what? He loves you. He loves you so much until he's willing to die for you and give his life as a ransom. I want you to come. And you did come. Came to him. You did come. That's the most important. You came to Jesus. And look, if you don't do anything else in your life, you've done the most important thing. You've given your life to Christ, okay? I have a few questions I want to ask you. Do you believe with all your heart, your mind, body, and soul that God raised Jesus from the dead? Do you believe that? Do you believe with all your heart, mind, body, and soul that he's coming back one day to receive you into his kingdom, that where he is, there you may be also do you believe that? The scripture says in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and the 10th verse, that if we confess with our mouths, believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. A few verses down it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is what we're doing right now calling on the name of the Lord, and it's your belief that's within you, inside of you, that makes the difference, okay? I want to pray a special prayer with you. What I want you to do is pray this prayer after me, okay? Lord Jesus, I come to you. I confess all of my sins to you right now. The word says, if I confess all of my sins to you, you are just to forgive me of all my sin. Lord Jesus, save me right now. My heart is open. My mind is open. My soul is open. 
I receive you into my life. I receive your precious Holy Ghost into my life to lead, to guide, to strengthen me, to keep me all the days of my life to the glory of God. Amen. 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 We're going to baptize you Sunday. Easter Sunday. Amen. How about that? That's that's special, special, isn't it? We are so proud of you and you're so brave. You're braver than you, you think. You are. You come from a brave family. You know that? <laughs> come from a brave family. We're so happy to have you. And then after you're baptized Sunday, they'll give you all the information. Then we're going to give you the right hand of fellowship. Okay? You still nervous? <laughs> it's going to be all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay? God bless you. This standard fellowship without ministers on it. Oh, <laughs> also, sister. This morning we have Sister Mars who's coming for prayer for her brother who will have open heart surgery this week. Your brother. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. We know what God can do. When we trust Him, when we have faith in Him, and when He, when we believe that He can do all things. And he cannot fail. God never fails. Never fails. No matter how sometimes the enemy tells us that, oh, this didn't happen, that didn't happen. God has a season and he has a time for all things to happen. It's a time to live, but yet there's a time to die. There's a time to harvest, but yet there's a time to plant. So there's a season for everything. God has already planned it out. He's already ordained it. And we cannot change it. Oh, we, we're just here to give him praise. We're here to adore him for what he's doing. So we're going to pray for your brother, Sister Morris. Has he had the surgery yet? 